Hi, we're back with Trey Layton. We're going to now go deep to tap Trey's expertise in high performance computing and large scale AI deployments. Trey has had a front row seat to the challenges that businesses face in managing AI infrastructure. And we're going to ask him to share his insights on bridging the enterprise gap, building sustainable operational models, and creating AI environments that deliver on performance and ROI. So, Trey, let me start with why do traditional tools not apply here? Why do we need a new stack? So when I think about building the environments that we've seen managed over the years in enterprise IT, I actually think about your consumer car manufacturer is that you know we're we're running we're building cars on a manufacturing line that are designed to be daily drivers. When we're building an artificial intelligence environment, we're really talking about constructing an F1 car that's designed to run around a track. And you need a different set of tools to be able to construct that highly specialized uh, solution to be able to deliver those outcomes. And when you think about the skills that are unique in the IT world in managing things to for availability, uh, high availability, and essentially every once in a while you'll get to a peak performance in, in an IT environment. In contrast to an, an artificial intelligence infrastructure that's running at peak performance all the time. And so th those two differences require a different set of skills that we're seeing and a different set of tools to utilize to actually deliver on those outcomes. I like your analogy. So you're, you're not necessarily optimizing for gas mileage, you're op optimizing for performance because you want to win the race. So. Okay, a lot of organizations we, we, we talk to, they can't really utilize their AI clusters you know, to the fullest. So uh, I want you to help the, under, uh, the audience understand what some of the root causes are of underutilization and why that's so important in this space. So it's a great question, and I think it's it's a misunderstood aspect of the challenge that we see out there. Is that uh, GPUs, specifically these type of environments, are as we mentioned previously, they're running at high performance all the time, and these devices fail. Our own our our own report internal analysis shows that GPUs fail about thirty three times the rate of a general purpose CPU. And that doesn't mean that they're fragile in the sense that they're, they're poorly constructed. The, if you think about, again, go back to that car analogy, when you're running a race car around a track and the engine's running at full RPMs all the time, sometimes tires are going to blow, sometimes cylinders are going to blow. And that's what happens in, in these AI infrastructure uh, solutions is that we're running all the devices at peak performance all the time. So, so you're going to deal in a consistent failure condition. How do you construct the environment to accommodate those failure conditions and how do you drive up utilization in those? So sometimes failures are soft, silent, software related failures. They're not hardware uh, device stops working altogether. And so there's things that you can do to mitigate those types of failures. I'm interested in this notion of, of, of skills. A lot of the organizations we talk to tell us they don't, they don't have the skills for you know, AI workloads. They've been running sort of, the, to your analogy, the consumer car workloads for a long, long time and they've perfected that. But now the tolerances are much l less and it requires different thinking. Now, of course, you and I, from our, you know, when we first met, you were trying to simplify the traditional IT infrastructure, bringing compute storage and networking together, and okay, that worked. There's a similar concept here, but it's different from a skills standpoint. Please explain. It's extremely different, and I, and I would say we could, we, could, we could pick on our friends in the I, in enterprise IT world, but I think that we're, it's also fair to say that there's an up-leveling of skills in the high-performance computing world as well. The high-performance computing world needs to understand the problems of IT, and the IT world needs to understand the problems of high-performance computing. And in that, we get a convergence of those two skills, and that will be the future artificial intelligence infrastructure engineer, is one who gets both, both worlds. 
And, and, but the architecture is unified, right? That's what you're... Absolutely. So if you, if you think about the modern HPC engineer is going to need to be versed in Kubernetes and microservices where they're largely experienced in batch-based processing technologies like Slurm and things like that. Whereas, whereas the IT person has, has been skilled in virtualization and cloud technologies, and now they're going to have to learn storage technologies like parallel file systems and, and, and how to run massively scalable uh, clustered uh, outcomes. Th these, these two worlds are colliding, and, and, and the skills are, are, are unique to uh, each, each particular environment. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you think about it, the entire stack is becoming AI optimized. Clustered computing, um, parallel file system you just mentioned, ultra low latency networks, an entirely new software stack that you guys uh, are, are, have built and, and, are, and are deploying. So how can organizations effectively design and maintain large scale AI systems? Is it, you're a golfer, is it like, just they got to get the muscle memory or? So I think the first thing is acknowledge that it's different. <laughs> Short game's different than yeah. the long game. <laughs> so, so you have to understand that it's different. I don't try uh, to apply enterprise IT skills to this particular space, but also expect that when you're constructing these environments that you're going to need to bring some of the, the, the skills in the IT paradigm paradigm there. So I think the first step is acknowledging that it's different. And the second step is bringing in an organization, whether it's us or someone else, that's skilled in this specific conversation. And I, that's the uniqueness that we bring is decades of experience of constructing uh, these environments and also acknowledging that there is a difference in this world that, that the world hasn't fully embraced yet. Okay, finally, we want to understand what a sustainable operational model looks like for AI infrastructure, Trey, at scale. Once you're a golfer, you understand muscle memory. Once I get that groove swing down, once I have the formula <laughs> in my head and my body, how do I sustain that? How do I keep it going? And how do I make sure I can, can handle AI at scale? So it's a great question. I think the first thing is acknowledging that it's different. And I think that there, there, there are two vectors to the question. There is a different degree of complexity that you have to internalize and manage and a different scale. And so when we accommodate those two things by building an infrastructure that is uh, modular, that you're, you're acquiring uh, partnerships with organizations that understand how to deal with the complexity and the scale simultaneously, I think ultimately that, that's, the, that's the formula for the right answer for sustaining the management of these types of infrastructures. Awesome, Trey, thanks so much for taking some time to explain kind of what's different around AI. Now you guys, you were in Atlanta at Supercomputing, you're going to be at GTC, uh, which is a super exciting show. Uh, excited to see you there. Excited to be there. It's, uh, it's an interesting time in the industry and uh, fun, fun to see all the growth that's going on. Thanks again. Okay, over the course of these three sessions, we've learned how rapidly deploying AI infrastructure can give organizations a competitive edge, why unified and intelligent compute environments are the foundation for AI success, and how to deal with complexities involved in optimizing large-scale AI ecosystems from understanding the shortcomings of traditional IT approaches. You can't just apply those to AI to tackling cluster underutilization, bridging skill gaps. Two experts, Pete Manka and Trey Layton have shared practical insights that can help leaders design, implement, and maintain high-performance AI infrastructure. So as you move forward with your AI initiatives, remember the importance of balancing speed with ongoing sustainability at scale, building integrated and unified environments that eliminate silos and continuously refining your strategies and operational models. We encourage you to take these learnings back to your teams and explore new possibilities for AI-driven innovation and leverage the expertise and solutions offered by companies like Penguin Solutions. Thank you for joining us. 
And here's to accelerating your AI journey toward transformative business outcomes. And for more information, go to penguinsolutions.com or engage with Penguin Solutions directly to explore how they can accelerate and optimize your AI initiatives. Thanks for watching. Thank you.